Hey, what's up, fantasy football fans? Um, yeah, I just wanted to make a short video um, be, uh, about working the waiver wire. Um, I did an explanation of it in the waiver editions for week one, but uh, I had it in sections. I had some I said in the beginning and some I said in the end, and I don't think I cleared every um point of focus that should be thought about when doing waivers. Uh, so I want to make it more condensed and in a better example of how the best way to work waivers. And it, the reason I'm making the video is because uh, of what probably anybody who has fantasy football teams on ESPN knows about by now if they're up this late and it's early in the morning. Um, at about 2 o'clock a.m., the uh, ESPN fantasy site went down completely. And if you all know, at about three, at about 4.30 a.m. is when wa um, wa waiver wire uh, changes take place and people start putting in waiver claims up until, you know, maybe an hour before that, so that about 3 a.m. so that they last minute moves or whatever. It's a lot of people that wasn't able to make moves tonight and Twitter was blowing up over the last two hours. I mean, people live it. People in money leagues that are mad that they wasn't able to make waiver claims and moves, just absolutely furious. So, um, and, but while that was going on, it made me think that I should definitely try to help some people out um, in case they wanted to have a more condensed way of knowing how to make waiver moves. As I said, there was a, uh, two forms of waivers one the standard way where um uh where the worst team in the league in every given week has the number one waiver claim and the best team has the the last waiver claim and then the other one where it's a, a rolling one where once you make a claim it works uh in inverse of the draft order so the person who drafts last in, the, in in this league, he has the first waiver claim and he gets to hold it until he uses it, no matter how long it is. Once he uses it, he drops to the back. But uh, I'm just going to focus on the standard one because I explained that second one um, pretty good in the other video, but I'll focus on the standard one. Um, it, with the standard one, though you have the first waiver claim, if you got if you have it, um, and though next week it may not be the same because if you get a better record than somebody, you're going to drop out of having the first. I don't want to give off the impression that you just just, um, you know, use it uh, regardless. If you have somebody out there that's on the waivers that you know you really want before 4.30 a.m. Wednesday and you have the first claim, absolutely use it on them. But. If there's no, as you get later in the season and the waiver wire starts to get really thin, if you don't really want to use it, it's okay to hold it until probably like Thursday or Friday and wait to see if people are going to drop players out of panic that you may want better or drop players out of necessity that you may want better. And that goes double for week one, two, and three when uh, everyone starting the new fantasy season and then week one performances go, uh, you know, go awry for some players and inexperienced players will drop jewels back on the waiver wire. And if you've got that first waiver priority and you didn't use it on players to clear that 430 um, on Wednesday um, and somebody releases a good player Thursday, you want to be the first to get them. So use the waiver your number one, if there's a great player out there, use it. But if it's not, hold it and see if a panic player will. Because this week, we had a number of great players that had very, very terrible outings this week. And an inexperienced player or a panic player or, you know, just anyone who doesn't know what they're doing, they'll cut these people. I mean, before the league started in one league, I mean, somebody cut Monty Ball. I still don't know why they did that. And somebody also in another league cut Le'Veon Bell. But if you had that first waiver claim, you was able to get him. Like this week, somebody could very well cut Vincent Jackson or even some some crazy person could drop Demarius Thomas or, or even Jamal Charles. And if you've got that first waiver wire, 
selection and you used it on whatever out there on the waiver that you didn't necessarily want although at this point of the week it's still good players out there but if you didn't use it on somebody that you didn't necessarily want and somebody drops say a Jamal Charles or a or a um, Demarius Thomas on Thursday you want to be the guy to get that that's what holding the number one or the two or the three high selection area that's what holding it does but you want to use it before the end of the week. You want to use it before Friday because at that point, the trade won't take effect, not the trade, but the ad will take effect on Sunday and you'll be able to use them. But if you don't use it by Friday, it won't take effect early enough. Or if you don't use it by Friday, you'll lose it because the next week somebody might have a better record than you and you use you lose your priority. So you want to use it. But you don't necessarily have to use it before the Wednesday um, 4.30 time um, um, limit. That's what I wanted to make this video to say. The, the four, you don't have to put in just because most people clear waivers at 4.30 Wednesday. If you got the number one, don't like the people out there, watch it until Friday and see what people do. Wait for a panicked owner. And if you got number one, you'll be the first in line to get that panic person, especially early on. So um, I just wanted to uh, relay that so that it'd be a little bit of better understanding and clarity with that situation in and of itself. So use it if you want somebody out there, but hold it until like a, like Friday in that, in that week to see what kind of moves people do, especially this week where people are panicking. So Hope that helps some, and if you got any questions, leave it in the comments. All right, thanks.